Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgia Calvin-Smith. Tonight, Burkina Bay's take to the streets in support of the military junta that removed President Cabaret a day earlier. Soldiers have suspended the constitution and say the ousted leader is safe, but haven't given details of his whereabouts. Also, the head of the Confederation of African Football blames the fatal crush at the Africa Cup of Nations game on an inexplicably closed gate. Tuesday's games go ahead with players wearing black armbands and a minute silence held before matches. And Zimbabwe's main opposition leader, Nelson Chamisa, launches a new party. The change means that he's made a definite break with the movement for democratic change, which has long been a powerhouse for the political opposition. But first, hundreds of people marched in Ouagadougou on Tuesday in support for the soldiers who ousted President Roque Marc Cabaret a day earlier. The junta's closed borders, brought in a curfew and dissolved parliament and the government. It said that Cabaret is safe, but haven't said where he is. The coup followed months of growing frustration over the handling of a jihadist insurgency. Our correspondents report. Swarms of people celebrated in the street and packed out the Place de la Nation the day after Burkina Faso's president, Rokmak Kabore, fell in a military coup. Ouagadougou's roads were blocked as people marched, brandished photos and blew their vuvuzelas in support of the military putschists. I came here this morning to support the putsch. We expect the military to deal with the corruption in the country. We want to tell the president that we don't want a transition of six months, one year, two years, three years or six years. We want a transition that must bring the state of the country back to normal. Some hope that the military junta will quickly tackle the security crisis the country has faced since 2015. We are tired of this situation. We are tired of crying. We are tired of always suffering because our brothers are killed. We are exasperated. Placards bearing anti-France slogans, the Malian flag and even pro-Russian chants. After the fall of President Kabore and with jihadis gaining ground in the country, some Burkina Bays want to see a radical change to their country's current international partners. We need to do what Mali and our neighbours have done. We are with the Malians, but we want to be free. We don't want to die for nothing. We want to say bye-bye to France, and we want to stay with the Russians. But if they are no good, we will say bye-bye to them too. Burkina Faso now awaits the military's next move, and normal life has more or less resumed in Ouagadougou. The coup is the seventh the country's had since 1960. In South Africa, an official investigation has found that more than 60% of contracts awarded to help the government tackle the pandemic were irregular. President Cyril Ramaphosa said the extent of the corruption is unacceptable. He authorised the probe in July 2020 and says that 386 cases have been referred to criminal prosecution and over 30 million euros in cash and assets have been recovered because of the probe so far. Nadine Theron tells us more. Wearing orange masks. The African Special Investigative Unit found that the government awarded thousands of corrupt and irregular contracts to suppliers of services and personal protective equipment to curb the spread of COVID-19. The investigation spans merely the first six months of the pandemic, but more than half of the contracts investigated were found to be irregular, totaling a cost of around 450 million euros. Almost 200 government officials were referred for disciplinary action and 400 cases were referred for criminal action to the National Prosecuting Authority. The South African health sector has been fraught with allegations of corruption since the start of the pandemic. One of the Special Investigative Unit's key witnesses, Babita Diakaran, was assassinated in front of her house last year. The former chief financial officer of the Gauteng Department of Health supplied the investigators with crucial evidence in into a fraudulent COVID-19 contract worth 20 million euros before her death. The former Minister of Health, Zuele Mkise, resigned in August last year after the investigative unit found that he personally benefited from a contract awarded to create a communications campaign around COVID-19. However, the report did not recommend that Mkise be criminally prosecuted. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa says he trusts that the National Prosecuting Authority will exercise its discretion quickly and diligently. Nadine, there are there for us. Now, Zimbabwe's main opposition leader, Nelson Chamisa, has launched a new party, the Citizens' Coalition 
for change. It means he's no longer with the main opposition party, the movement for democratic change. Now, it was once a potent opposition movement, but has split several times over the last few years because of internal power struggles. Ryan Truscott tells us more about the, what the launch of this new party means for opposition politics in the country. It's a, a major change in the political landscape. Next year, there are going to be presidential and parliamentary elections. And for the first time in 23 years, the movement, movement for democratic change will no longer be the main opposition party on the ballot papers. Every single presidential and parliamentary election since the year 2000 has mm -hmm. been uh, dominated by just two parties, the ruling ZANU-PF and the MDC. The MDC's open palm symbol, its colors red and black, and its slogans calling for change, those have all been uh, a staple part of every election. Now this new party will be very different. It, it's got a very different name, the Citizens Coalition for Change. Its supporters will be asked to wear the color yellow, not red anymore and their symbol will be an index finger uh, pointing up at the sky. Africa's top footballing chief, Patrice Motsepe, said that a closed gate was the cause of a deadly crush in which eight people were killed before an Africa Cup of Nations match in Yaoundé on Monday. Motsepe said that the locking of the entrance was inexplicable. The loss of life has weighed heavily on the tournament's fans and squads. Players wore black armbands at Tuesday's games whilst billboards displayed messages of condolence around the arenas. But the matches themselves were given the green light. Claudia Sono tells us more. At least eight people were killed in a stampede at the Olembe Stadium on Monday night, while Cameroon clashed with Comoros in their round of 16 game at the ongoing Africa Cup of Nations. The Confederation of African Football has said that the next two games scheduled at the Olembe Stadium will now be moved to the Yaoundé Omnisport Stadium and the Limbe Stadium in the southwest region. At a presser on the disaster, CAF President Patrice Motsepe said that um, one of the gates to the stadium had been closed and that investigations are on way to establish who closed it and why. There is zero tolerance, absolutely zero tolerance, on circumstances which could result in people being injured at the stadium or people losing their lives. Urgent emergency steps and measures to make sure that that doesn't happen again. A moment of silence will be held in future AFCON competitions. This stampede has totally shocked followers of the tournament. Images being shared on social media show crying um, fans being crushed at an entrance gate. About 40 seriously injured victims were rushed to a nearby hospital. Well, COVID-19 restrictions were normally supposed to have limited attendance to a maximum of 80% of the 60,000 capacity stadium. But officials Officials believe that about 50,000 fans tried to attend that game. Following um, a very low turnout during the first round of games, Cameroonian authorities have taken special measures to um, try to fill up the stadiums, including giving out free tickets to fans as well as organizing transport to the stadiums. Well, with dozens of the injured um, still in hospitals, some in very critical condition, there are fears that the death toll may still rise. Claudia Sono there for us. And Tuesday's matches saw Senegal beat Cape Verde 2-0 in the last 16s. The Lions will next face either Mali or Equatorial Guinea, who play on Wednesday. In the day's later game, Morocco beat Malawi 2-1 at the Amadou Ihijo Stadium. Simon Harding's in Cameroon for us. Simon, with the tragedy hanging over the games, how did it play out? It is true that the tragedy and the events of the Olembe hung uh, like a black cloud over the games, a moment of silence observed by players in both matches uh, to remember the victims of what happened. But once the ball was kicked and kickoff was taken, it was all uh, back to normal in uh, the last 16 and uh, for a place trying to book a place in the quarterfinals. Uh, Morocco-Malawi was a very interesting match, uh, quite a bit of a mismatch between Morocco, one of the powerhouses on the continent, and Malawi, one of the smallest nations. Um, 
who really had nothing to lose after reaching the last 16 for the first time in their history. And they, in fact, took a shock lead after just seven limits when Mango blasted in from about 40 yards. A wonderful strike which beat Yassin Bounou in a goal. Heads turned in the stadium in disbelief, really, as Morocco fell behind. But the Atlas Lions pushed and pushed in the first half and were rewarded right on the stroke of half-time when Youssef Enesiri of Sevilla headed in at the far post to make it one all after the break, Morocco uh, were really pushing for that second goal and uh, Ashraf Hakimi uh, scored his second free kick of the tournament. Another wonderful strike, two beautiful goals in this game to make it 2-1, a scoreline that Morocco would hold until the end of the match and therefore book their place in the quarterfinals. And that'll be up against either the Ivory Coast or against Egypt. So regardless, a massive match uh, for Vahid Ali Lodzic and Morocco in the next round. And Senegal, of course, who beat Cap Verde 2-0, a goal of Sergio Mane in that match. Uh, Senegal, who are still yet to concede a goal in the tournament, even though question marks still remain about their ability to play uh, under pressure because Cape Verde were down to nine men and Senegal still struggled. Thanks very much. Simon Harding there for us following the Africa Cup of Nations in Cameroon. That is, though, all we have time for on Eye on Africa. Thanks so much for joining us. Do so again if you can. Take care.